So it's been quite a while since we've spoken about calcium. I made one video titled Calcium is Dangerous and another about how to reverse arterial calcification, both I think over a year ago now, maybe even three years ago. And today is a reminder that you should not be taking calcium in any form whatsoever. Additionally, being mindful of calcium intake from various foods, particularly dairy, is crucial to optimizing your health. The combination of high calcium in the diet, mainly a standard American diet, with typical modern nutrient imbalances, is a perfect storm of negatives to accelerate various degenerative diseases through the hardening of certain soft tissues. Chances are that you need to make extreme dietary changes in order to reverse what you've been doing most of your life. So if you look at an older person's supplement cabinet, even your parents, it's very evident they've been influenced by the mainstream medical advice. They probably have calcium, vitamin D, vitamin E, things they should definitely not be taking. You know, they think it's making their bones stronger, but is it really? That's what most people think of when calcium is brought up, bone health. In reality, bone is composed mostly of collagen, which is from amino acids, aka eating meat. Calcium is only needed in small amounts for circulatory functions, an electrolyte component of muscular contractions, hormone production, and yes, it is a component of bone and certain heart tissue, but by no means is that its main function. It's a much overstated mineral, and the main reason people aren't absorbing it or utilizing it efficiently, one, because vitamin D is required for proper metabolism, no one's getting enough sun, two, Magnesium is needed as well, arguably the most efficient mineral in the majority of the population. Three, K2, another important nutrient necessary for calcium processing. No one gets enough. Their gut microbiomes aren't healthy enough to make it. You can check out my past videos on vitamin D, magnesium, and K2. For more information on each of those subjects, just search Frank Tofano and the specific title. On YouTube. Let's move on to foods high in calcium. Bioavailability is a very confusing element of calcium absorption. The digestibility of green vegetables or fish bones compared to dairy is not even feasible. Paper value versus actual absorption is not understood by the general public. So soy milk, almond milk, oh hey they have so much calcium. And it's really just a synthetic fortification, probably because they're trying to compete with you know, regular dairy milk being good for your bones, high in calcium. In reality, calcium is destroying people's health. I've seen carnivores eat sardines, telling people that they're going to digest the calcium in the bones. The form of calcium in the bones, whether it's canned sardines or salmon, it has such a low bioavailability and your body does not need it. Yogurt, cheese, and milk, however, do have highly available forms of calcium, and that's also mainly because they are liquid, and the you know, solubility of a liquid is much higher than a solid food. In the case of that, I mean, you're probably going to be getting too much calcium if you eat dairy every day. Collard greens, a lot of these plant-based sources of calcium are very high in oxalates, different anti-nutrients, and you're not even digesting it. The point is, in a natural diet, you're going to be fine. You're going to get a small amount of calcium that your body is going to utilize. It will be plenty. One interesting comparison is that human breast milk has 80 milligrams of calcium versus 305 milligrams in cow's milk. That's basically four times the amount of calcium in the source of dairy that people are consuming. I'm assuming that's because cows are much heavier, their bones are denser, they need more calcium. Either way, humans aren't meant to handle the calcium content of dairy consistently in the diet. Certain ethnic groups, maybe the Dutch, various Nordic countries, Sweden may be able to, but you know, because of the lack of sun, because people have been consuming dairy most of their lives without enough magnesium, I really think that the majority of the populace needs to stop consuming it entirely for months, maybe even years. 
at least to, to really rebalance the mineral profile in the body and get healthy. So yeah, dairy does not build strong bones. What builds strong bones is a diet very high in animal protein, especially red meat, is excellent, excellent, excellent. And I mean, yeah, children, teenagers, if it's very high quality dairy, I think it's excellent, I think that's great. But past those growth stages of life, once you're in your mid to late 20s, especially older, really be mindful of your dairy consumption and see how you react to it. Symptoms of hypercalcemia, AKA calcium toxicity, calcium poisoning, are frequent urination and thirst, headaches, fatigue, bone pain, nausea, vomiting, constipation, decreased appetite, forgetfulness, memory loss, muscle aches and cramping. Of course, Soft tissue calcification and bone spurs are possible, but no mainstream medical advice will tell you the truth. Check out that past video I mentioned earlier on how to reverse calcification for that. I would say the most obvious ones out of those symptoms are headaches and memory issues. So if you notice one of those things, definitely stop eating all dairy for a very long period of time. Hypocalcemia, calcium deficiency, to my understanding, doesn't really exist in the medical literature. Everyone, for the most part, has excess calcium stores, which may not be utilized due to a lack of those other nutrients mentioned earlier, particularly magnesium and K2. Chances are, if you drink one bottle of a high calcium mineral water, such as Gerolsteiner, you'll feel the toxicity symptoms instead of feeling better. Unless you were carnivore, which is a very rare circumstance, I would argue that we don't know that much about calcium deficiency because it's so excessive in modern diets you know, to the point where you couldn't really find one person that even has a calcium deficiency. Bringing in the only realistic scenario where you might need calcium following a carnivore diet for a very long time and you don't consume any dairy whatsoever. That's because the mineral interactions of calcium line up perfectly synergistically and antagonistically with an all meat diet zinc sulfur phosphorus iodine the main interacting minerals with calcium are all incredibly high on carnivore manganese which is the final interacting mineral is very deficient so when you're getting insane amounts of those minerals phosphorus zinc sulfur supplementing iodine you can get your calcium levels really low which is probably why carnivore works so well for so many people. You know, they're coming from a standard American diet, a diet that was very high in calcium. They're fixing that imbalance. But eventually, you will need some calcium in the context of those naturally unbalanced mineral levels when you eat large amounts of meat for the majority of your calories. So you guys can check out organsupplements.com. We do have magnesium and K2. As I said several times, I have those past videos on calcium. So thank you guys for joining me today. Let me know how you like this. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I mean, you know, grinding up eggshells, eating fish bones, all of this, it's incredibly, incredibly ridiculous. And if anything, you're harming your health. Calcium, just like a lot of other vitamins and minerals that are popularized in the mainstream media, are definitely doing more harm than good. You guys can check out frank defoundcom for all of my other businesses. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow.